Hey, it's Ben. This video will show you how to set up a Lynx node on the cloud vendor Scaleway, which is located in Europe. You've already created your account at Scaleway. Let's go ahead and log in. Be sure to enable your two-factor authentication. So I'm logged into my account. I'm going to go ahead and create a new instance by hitting the green plus button here. Let's create node 32. I want to use Debian. I specifically want to use Stretch, which is the latest version. I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to put this in Paris. I'm going to choose the development server Dev 1S. 299 euro a month, which is about $3.40 USD a month. It's the cheapest server they have. It has two processors with two gigs of RAM. The 100 megabit per second bandwidth is slow, but for the Lynx node, it's perfect. And 20 gigs is more than enough than what we need. I'm going to name my volume node 32. I'm going to review my settings. Not much to change. And I've already set up my SSH key on my desktop, and I've called it desktop RDRSA, so I know which one. I'm going to choose create. Because I need to reference my local SSH key, I'm going to go ahead and use the dash I. I want to include my local IDRSA key, port 22. I want to log in as root. And the IP address is right there. And hit return. I'm now logged into the server as root. Let's go ahead and prep it for the Lynx CI installer. I'm going to do an app update, and I'm going to do an app upgrade to upgrade all the existing packages on the machine. And don't forget to do your final distribution upgrade for the target node. Now that the node is updated, I like to reboot it to get all the package updates confirmed. I think we're ready to log back into the node to check to make sure everything is working. Let's log back in with our SSH key. All right, we're logged into root. Now the packages have been updated and the distribution operating system has been upgraded. So we're ready to install links. Let's go ahead and visit the GitHub website for the Lynx project, get links slash, I'm um, sorry, github.com slash get links, and click on the Lynx CI repository, scroll down, and copy and paste the installer script, the one line installer script. Let's copy that and bring up the terminal, copy, paste, and hit return. It takes four minutes to run this installation. Let's fast forward there. It's done. So you can log out of the terminal and walk away and go spend the rest of your day. Or you can stay here and wait for the installation to start. The installation starts every 15 minutes on the hour, uh, 15, 30, 45 or on the hour. And once that installation starts, it takes about four minutes to finish. And then the machine will reboot and the block chain will sync. So let's fast forward a few minutes and we'll see the next step. You can always check the status of the installation by tailing the syslog. So I'm going to copy paste. The installation will be printed to the syslog once it starts running. It looks like the installer has started. It's going to take about four minutes to run. Now that the installation is finished, let's log into the machine with the new username and password that was assigned to it during the setup process. So we don't need to log in with the SSH key anymore, we can log in with the links user. So let's log in with SSH links at the IP. And the default password is going to be links, L-Y-N-X. Now, the installer forces you to change that password on your first, on your first time you log in. So L-Y-N-X. Okay, I'm going to enter in my new password. Be sure you don't forget it because it's the only way to get in, unless you console in via the Scaleway website. Okay, the machine resets the password, logs me out. Now I have to log back in with my new password. Okay, great, I'm logged in as the links user. 
Now all the links business runs under the root account. So I need to get into the root account. An easy way to do that is sudo soup. And what's the password for my links account? Enter that in. Okay, I'm logged in as the, I'm gonna do a CD to the root of the root account. Now I'm logged in as the root user on the new device. I'm also gonna set the password for the root account. So I'm gonna type in password, enter in a new one. Let's enter in a new root password and enter in it again. Now my machine is a bit more secure. Let's go ahead and run HTOP to see if linksd is running, and it is. If I scroll down, I can see that the links daemon is running right here. It's running for been running for a few minutes. Let's go ahead and see what it's doing. And you can do that by tailing the debug log. Tail-f. In the dot links directory, there is a debug.log file. Go ahead and tail that log. The pre-allocating line here indicates that the historic blockchain bootstrap file had been downloaded. It's currently being indexed by links and the blockchain is being built. It's gonna take a while, so probably 10 to 12 hours to go through this process of syncing up. Just let it run and let it do its thing. Some of these other line items are that the built-in miner is currently off during the syncing process. It doesn't need to be running. And it's connecting to other peers, kind of detecting itself on the global network, which is great. So you just let it run and come back in about maybe four hours to check it. You'll still see these pre-allocating notices, but in about 12 hours, it'll be done. Once it finishes syncing the blockchain, Lynx daemon will turn on its own miner and it will begin doing its job with the default settings in the links.conf file. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. You can easily look at the links.conf file by typing in nano.links, and the file is links.conf. The links daemon is pre-set up. The randomly created username and password is assigned during the creation, so this is unique to your machine. Don't let anybody see your username and password, otherwise they'll be able to gain access to the wallet if you have it enabled on this node. By the way, if you scroll down, you'll see that the wallet is disabled by default. So there's no funds on this node, and there aren't until you change that value and restart links. So if someone were to gain access to it, they wouldn't be able to steal anything. Is it mining, though? You bet it is. If I scroll down, here's the mining addresses that it's been preceded with. So these mining addresses are owned and managed by the Lynx development team. So you're mining for the team. You're not really making us too much links, but it sure helps to confirm and verify and relay transactions. If you want to start making links, mining links and having it go to your own wallet, what you do is you switch out these values, remove these values. I'm going to go ahead and hit control K and delete some of these lines. Let's go ahead and delete these. I'm going to get rid of all these extra values. And then I'm going to open up my Coinemy wallet on my phone and I'm going to copy and paste addresses from that Coinemy wallet into this list. So this list is comprised of only addresses that are owned by me. You could also use addresses from your desktop QT wallet. And then all you need to do is save the file, control O. The last thing you need to do is restart links D. And you can do that easily with systemctl restart links D. Once you hit return, Links daemon will restart and it will pick up the new changes to the links.conf file and you're all set. Once the sync occurs, finishes with the blockchain right here, the miner will start up and it will start mining links. If you win any blocks, their mining reward will go to the addresses that you specified in the links.conf file. Congratulations, you did it. You're all done.